So just like that, draft season is officially over. The draft's been over for a couple of days now, uh, and the Baltimore Ravens, over these next couple of weeks, as every other team will as well, uh, they will be signing their draft picks. But the signings, they don't stop there, even for rookies, because just like the Baltimore Ravens have and all 32 teams in the NFL have done, uh, they can bring in and bring on undrafted rookie free agents. So those are guys that... Coming out of college, they did not get drafted this year, but that doesn't mean that thing stopped. They are getting signed on uh, by these NFL teams, and they get still get an opportunity of a lifetime. And even though their chances are a lot smaller to make the teams than somebody who's drafted because there's much less of an investment, they can still make their mark because there's plenty been plenty of NFL players over the years who have been undrafted and have made it and made a good career out of it for themselves. So we'll see what a lot of these guys do. But one guy in particular, Dayton Wade. Uh, he got a lot of Ravens fans hype when it was announced that they signed him, uh, the wide receiver. And we got a question uh, from my guy, Tank Bromanski, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. So shout out to him. Appreciate you for being a Team Keep It Clean patron. If you and y'all would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. But if you don't, as long as you subscribe to the channel, and as of right now, uh, we are a little over 172 subscribers away from 75K. So subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. Now, his question, he said, What's up, Engraven? Hope 2024 is treating your family and you right. I appreciate that, Tank. Thank you, my friend. Uh, and he said, I was wondering, if you looked at tape from a wide receiver, we picked up name Dayton Wade. Uh, I was watching Simply's video. Shout out to our guy, Simply AS10, the best. This dude is just crazy with it because he makes so many fire videos and he makes them fast. Too. I don't know how he does it, but shout out to Simply. Uh, but he said he was watching Simply's video on him and the one-handed catch reminded me of a prime OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr. moment. And yeah, that catch um, where he, he caught the ball, but it's like he caught the ball on the ground and it's like his head was on the ground, but he caught the ball and got right back up and showed it. He said, yeah, I got it. And it was a catch. It was crazy. I, I never seen no one-handed catch like that before. It had every single reason to be an incompletion, but he made it happen. So had I watched a film on him, had I looked up tape uh, from this wide receiver? Well, before your question, I had not. But after your question, I decided to. I said, who's Dayton Wade? Let me check out this guy, Dayton Wade, see what everybody talk about. Because just like my guy, there's a lot of people, a lot of Ravens fans, they really love this signing. And I know as Ravens fans, any receiver come on board, we're going to be like, all right, there's going to be extra, extra sets of eyes on him. But with Dayton Wade, there's a lot of happy Ravens eyes on him. Now, um, don't get mad at me. And I ain't trying to overhype or anything like that. But when I watch Dayton Wade, uh, and the game that I watched, I watched uh, Ole Miss versus LSU. Uh, yeah, I, I was watching that game. I'm like, man, maybe I do need to start watching college football because that game, it was just fun to watch it. And then I remember early in the game in the first quarter, Jaden Daniels, second overall pick, by the way, he was scrambling, made a couple of people miss, and then, wow, he got whacked. But anyway, that's beside the point. He fumbled the ball and whatnot. But anyway, uh, Dayton Wade in that game, when I watched him, I watched the way that he runs uh, with or without the ball. Um, I just watched him run routes. I watched how he catches the ball. Uh, watch how smooth he is. He's about five foot nine, so he's a shorter receiver. When I watch, and I watched the way that Ole Miss used him. They used him on bubble screens. They had him in the backfield. They had him in the slot at slot receiver. They had him at outside receiver, and they incorporated this guy. They made sure he was incorporated from the beginning of the game. From the beginning of the game, I think first drive alone, he might have had like two, three catches. He touched, he touches the ball a lot for Ole Miss. He reminds me, again, don't get mad at me, but this was, he looked like it. He reminded me of Zay Flowers a lot, a lot. Not saying that, oh, he's on Zay Flowers level or whatnot, but he really reminded me of Zay Flowers because he reminded, just the way that the Baltimore Ravens do with Zay Flowers where they find so many different ways to get him the ball. And even like, yeah, you ever seen somebody running? And even though they got a helmet on when they running, you could tell they just smiling. You could tell they just happy. That's how Dayton they, they Wade runs. He runs like he's just so happy and he just appreciates the moment. But the way that he catches the ball, he catches the ball so smoothly. He just makes it look super, super easy. Um, and he he's quick too. He's quick. Now, I will say he's not as shifty 
as Zay Flowers. He ain't as shifty as Zay Flowers, but <laughs> a lot of people are not. Because Zay Flowers, like, with how shifty he is, it's on another another level. It don't even make no sense. But with he, I tell you, he reminded me of Zay Flowers a lot, especially because there was one play where I think it was, yeah, it was a bubble screen. So we, we know Zay Flowers, he done caught a lot of those for the Ravens. But it was a bubble screen. His uh, quarterback name was um, Dart. I forgot his first name, but his, his quarterback's last name was Dart. So he threw the ball to him. Dart, Dart threw the ball to Wade. Wade caught it, and he, he made somebody miss, but then he ran backwards a little bit. He ran backwards to try to run forward. I said, oh, yeah, that's Zay Flowers all day because they want to make that big play. And I remember with Zay Flowers last year, a lot of times, more so toward the beginning of the year, he would – run backwards because he knows he can make somebody miss he believes in himself he's like oh okay i'll make these people miss i might run backwards a little bit but i'll run forward that much more he did that a lot more toward the beginning of the season but i know as the season went along there were still some times that he did it but then toward the end of the season there were times where he was just like no i'm, I'm gonna get whatever yards that i can i'm gonna still make some people miss but i'm gonna get whatever yards that i can i said oh yeah that way reminded me of flowers with that but anyway um he he got some nice speed he got some nice speed and the way that he concentrates, like you always hear about concentration drops from wide receivers. It seems like when he catches, he just makes concentration catches. It's like the exact opposite. And like I said earlier, he catches the ball so smoothly. It ain't no awkward hand motions or anything like that. He catches it with his hands. It looks like his gloves, like they made it like marshmallows or something, or they made it like pillows or something, or the softest feathers in the world because his, his hands are extremely soft, man. And he just makes it look so easy and effortless. Like he, he ain't do no body catching. I ain't see nobody catching. I saw him all hands, all day, every day. Um, but again, he is somebody that they, they want to make sure that he's involved in the game. They find different ways to get him the ball. Again, the bubble screens, had him in the backfield. They may run a reverse with him, hand, him off, hand it off to him, uh, have him in the slot, have him outside, have him do the intermediate stuff, have him go deep. They literally have him do everything, run every type of route. His route running was smooth too now, but they, they, they use him everywhere. So he was a straight up weapon. A weapon for Ole Miss. That's how I looked at it. Now, when we look at his production, we look at the numbers. And we know, again, numbers don't tell the whole story. That's why you actually got to watch film, watch the game, see how the player plays and whatnot. Because numbers ain't going to tell you everything. They never will. Uh, but our uh, last couple of years at Ole Miss, last year in 2020, or two years ago, excuse me, in 2022, he had 27 catches for 309 yards, average 11.4 yards per catch, and he had three touchdowns as well. And then he had uh, nine rushing attempts for 78 yards, uh, had average uh, 8.7 yards per carry. So, again, showing you, you could do a little bit of both, but this year I guess the workload increased by a lot because he went from 27 la two years ago to 55 catches last year. 309 yards two years ago to 830 yards this year. Averaged, his average per catch was 11.4 yards per catch two years ago to 15.1 last year. And then uh, he increased his touchdown total by one as well. So the numbers definitely increased. It looks like the opportunities obviously increased uh, as well. Um, so that was really, really good for him. He had 28 more catches in 2023 than he did in 2022 and had about 521 more yards and added another touchdown so that's always a nice thing to see why he went undrafted i couldn't tell you that i, I don't have the answer to that but like we talked about earlier just because somebody goes undrafted it doesn't mean that that's the end of their story and baltimore ravens are giving him an opportunity uh to show like hey what you got what you got now um, when I look at him, he again, he can play. He can play, but I think his best opportunity uh, is probably going to be on Baltimore Ravens practice squad. And in order for him to make it there in preseason, got to show out. Got to show out. And I know a lot of Ravens fans may get upset at this, me saying that his best opportunity is probably going to be on a practice squad, but that's because, like, where is he going to fit in it? Because the Baltimore Ravens right now, they have Zay Flowers. He's obviously a lock to make the roster. They have a Rashad Bateman. He's obviously a lock to make the roster. Uh, they have um, the rookie, Tez Walker. He'll be a lock to make the fourth-round pick. Yeah, he's making the roster. 
They also have Nelson Aguilar on a one-year deal. He's a lock to make the roster. They signed Deontay Hardy to a one-year deal. He's a receiver. He's a return man, and he'll primarily be the return man, but he's a receiver as well. That's five spots right there. And so when you think about it, this is an offense that is not pass-heavy. <laughs> Only in playoff time. But it's an offense that's not a pass-heavy offense. So if you got five receivers already, all five not going to be getting snapped. Oh, then you got Tylen Wallace too. Excuse me. My apologies. So that's six. You got six right now. I don't think Tylen Wallace is necessarily a lock to make the roster, but he's there right now. So you already got six receivers right there, five that are potentially locks. Four that are for sure locks, five that are probably locks. So if you are in a run dominant offense, your third receiver, a lot of times even your second receiver, but your third receiver, they're not even going to get, not snap, they'll get their snap, but they ain't even going to get catches like that because you, you are a run heavy team. And think about that with the third receiver, they're, they're behind the Mark Andrews too. They, and they're still, we didn't even talk about the tight ends. Tight ends catch passes too. The running backs, they catch passes as well. And then, of course, you got the running game. So that will take away from what, of a lot, what a lot of the other receivers can do. So that's why I feel like his best shot would be to make the practice squad. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, he will still be telling the Ravens, cut the check. He'll still be getting paid every week. Nice money too. Practice squad people, they can make some bread. But he will really, really have to show out in training camp and all that and in preseason too. So hopefully he does get the opportunity to do just that. And, hey, you, you never know. You could start on a practice squad, but that doesn't mean it has to finish there. It really doesn't. And, hey, who knows? He could impress the Baltimore Ravens enough to where they're like, you know what, we can't risk losing you. We don't want to put you on waivers. We don't even want to put you on a practice squad so somebody can steal you off there. You know what? We want to put you on the active roster. Now, that would be extremely difficult, extremely difficult, but not impossible.